Good morning. This morning we light the light of Christ to remind us that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it.
so amazing. We're going to walk over to the fellowship hall a different way today. We're going to go through the back doors over here. And anyone who wants to join us for Sunday school is welcome to follow us, all right? So can you start the line off for me? And we're going to start walking down that way because we have to move the altar table. There you go. Good. Good. Follow the leader. Hi, good morning. <laughs> That's the the funniest sound. Sorry. Like little mice are moving. I feel like a Disney song could come on. I'm worried about sound. all these chords. So. Okay. Wait. There you go. I was going to do announcements over that, but I, I'm too <laughs> distracted. Well, we welcome you this morning. We are so glad that you're here to worship with us today on this Palm Sunday. And, and uh, thank you so much, John. And I, I want to thank the Tansbergs also. They, um, they helped us with the, the pond proms. These are from... Uh, um, your back, your backyard, side, side, yard. side yards, and uh, well, we want to get the location right. <laughs> so we uh, so grateful for that, and for Shelly for decorating, and the children, the fantastic. And I do want to say, um, and uh, um, that for those of you that had family and are, are were wanting to live stream the children, we're recording it. The uh, the live stream. We're not sure. We don't think it's going out, but we are recording, so they'll be able to see it later uh, this afternoon. So they will be able to see it, just uh, not live, unless I'm completely wrong about what's happening. Uh, but it, we got brand new signals that came in this morning that we've never seen uh, seen before. But we know that we're recording, so you can reassure your family if they're texting you, "I can't see it," uh, that uh, it'll be there later um, today. So. Uh, we just really do want to welcome you. So glad that you're here to worship with us today. And, and uh, we want to remind everyone uh, about our 510 link. That's five minutes before and after the service. Meet someone maybe you haven't met before. Today's a perfect day for that. If someone's within 10 feet of your, your circle of, of conversation, invite them to join that. And they, they have something in common with somebody else you know. Try to connect them uh, and, and find ways of, of doing that. We want to be a place of hospitality and, and, and life here at St. Peter's. So be a place where everyone is welcome and can connect with God of new and, uh, and wonderful ways. It, my prayer is that by the end of the day, you'll know uh, the, the hope of Christ in your life. Um, I, I don't have a whole lot of uh, announcements to, uh, to bring to you. I know you're thankful. And, uh, but I did want to bring your attention to uh, um, uh, the, the, the bulletin and uh, the sermon note page. There's two things I want you to know. First, our calendar events that are coming up today. Today, we are celebrating Palm Sunday. And then uh, there is an Easter egg hunt at the end of the service for the, for the kids, Marty. For the kids, um, so yeah, you can't not, don't knock kids over. It's for the kids, but you can go out and watch and, and enjoy the uh, the egg extravaganza, egg extravaganza. Um, and then we have our, our Monday Thursday services this week at seven o'clock, and uh, we'll have a communion in here. We'll move over to the gym for our prayer stations. If you participated in that last year, uh, I hope you'll come back and, and 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 invite people to this unique way of worshiping and reflecting on God's love for us. And then on Friday at noon, we'll have our Good Friday service again, a time of reflection. We'll have. Uh, a tenebrae and, and time of reading um, scripture and reflecting on God's love and sacrifice for us. On the back of your bulletin, um, I have something different than sermon, a uh, place for sermon notes. And uh, as being Holy Week, I wanted us to find time to make sure we slow down and, and take a breath. And, and I thought we'd take in uh, the seven last words of Christ. Now, that doesn't mean seven words, seven phrases of Christ and from, di from uh, seven different vers uh, verses in scripture beginning tonight. Um, we invite you to read and gives you a way to um, instructions of, to be still and to read and to pray the scriptures and, and see how they speak to you. And I'm at the end of each day, uh, I'll put something up on YouTube or Facebook and uh, there's a, um, a, on our webpage that QR code will take you there. Um, or just a, a short little uh, five minute, um, my, my thoughts on the scripture, if you would like to use that. And so that'll be toward the end of the um, the, the day into the, the evening, so you can use those as part of your reflection if you would like. So I want to let you know um, about that. As you see, today is Communion Sunday. I want you to let you know everyone is welcome. You don't have to be a member here or anywhere else, but, and we'll give instructions of how we take communion here if you haven't had that with us before. 
But at this time, um, I would like to invite you to stand with me for our opening prayer. And uh, if this is unique to you, one of the things we do here is we stand and we extend our, our hands uh, a way of receiving. It's a way to remind ourselves that we receive God's love, that God freely gives to us, and we can be present with God and God's presence. So you don't have to do it, but if you'd like to, uh, I invite you to join us in that, and I'll lead you in a prayer. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here. Help us to see you today, to hear your words, and to know your love. Guide us with your light, your wisdom, and resurrection. Amen. Amen. Well, I invite you now to greet your neighbor, say hello, shake a hand, uh, move about the, the church, be as comfortable as you like. remain standing uh, before, while um, Lynette Cocking comes uh, to, to join us for our affirmation of faith. I wanted to mention Rachel is doing well. She's out of town um, and there was a reunion that, it, it, um, that they haven't had in 20 or so years from uh, where she uh, went to seminary and they're having um, and she goes, I don't know why they picked Palm Sunday. It's one of her favorite days of the year. And so she regrets not being here. But I wanted to let you know this morning we have uh, uh, Lynette Cocking is going to lead us in the affirmation of faith. And Pat Campbell will lead us in the prayer a little, a little bit later. But I wanted to let you know. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the affirmation of faith from First Timothy, um, number 889 in the hymnal. There is one God, and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of all acceptance, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, received throughout the world, taken up in glory, Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. 
Amen. seated. This morning, as we take time for our uh, prayer and preparing for our prayer, uh, we'll be singing uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness. If you'd like to use the kneelers, you're welcome uh, to use those, but use this as a time of reflection and a time of lifting up your heart uh, to the Lord. So I just want to say one thing. I, one thing that wasn't written down here that uh, I don't think that you know about, uh, you know about Joey? No. Okay, good. Joey, I'll t- I saw Joey. Uh, Joey, uh, that's right. <laughs> um, Joey wanted to let us, today Joey is celebrating a, an anniversary 
It's his 25th anniversary of being sober. And he's so proud of that. And we, we were talking about, he's just, he's celebrating for so many different reasons. And one of them we talked about is uh, um, that he's been sober longer uh, than he's not been um, sober. And that is a, a huge milestone. Yes. And we just want to um, praise God for that. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. I have one um, prayer request here. And this is... Our son, Ken, is recovering from an appendectomy Friday. Thank God for his full operation, for a, su for a successful operation. Pray for recovery. It was not signed, so I'm not certain who it is, but God knows who it is. It's the, the, the Tamsbergs. The Tamsbergs. Oh, John, you didn't tell me. <laughs> okay. So let's go in prayer. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem and to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise him with our lips, but may follow him in the way of the cross. We lift up those who need healing, comfort, those who mourn, especially those in Nashville, which community um, experienced some tragedy this week. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of, them, of the mighty, quiet within us every voice of your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love in lives given to your service. For we pray in Christ's name as you taught us. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ben. As followers of Christ, we are responding to a gracious place into us. I believe it's a gracious place in everyone, whether we're followers of Christ or not. And that we know that we want to grow into something more than we are today. And Jesus says, follow me, and I will show you life. And so we center our lives around that uh, path of being followers of Christ, followers of the way of Christ and, and imitators of, of Jesus. And, and so um, that's what this time of offering is about. It's about offering a God ourselves. And so we ask three questions each week in our, our church. God, who are you calling me to be? Where are you calling me to go? And what are you calling me to give? And we hear and we discern the answers to those questions through corporate worship, through study of Scripture, through reading, um, uh, through our prayers, through our acts of service and, and engaging in justice ministries. And, and, uh, and by doing all those things, we begin to discern God's Word in our life and we begin to discover how to walk uh, that path. And so every step we take is a step of progress in that, no matter how great or small. And so this morning during offering, when we bring our resources, we're bringing the resources of our life and our gifts, and we're saying, God, we trust in you to call us together, and we will bring our resources together as the body of Christ to be stewards of our life, stewards of the um, creation, stewards of this world, that we might be a reflection of your kingdom so that when people see us, they go, oh, there's the kingdom of God. And that's what we long uh, to imitate is the kingdom of God, that we are in the kingdom, we are part of the kingdom. And so let us now offer our gifts and lives to Jesus. Let's pray. Holy God, we come to you this morning and we want to give ourselves to you completely and uh, sometimes even hesitantly, but here we are and we offer ourselves. And so we ask that you would uh, take us in, that you would speak to us and you would give us the courage to follow you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
thank you for who you are and who you've called us to be. And we pray that you would use these gifts in our lives for your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a, um, there's a harsh reality. It's, it's actually, it's, it's, it can be good or bad depending on how your day or week or life is going. And it's, uh, it's this one. It's that you are doing perfectly everything you need to be doing to get the results you're getting today. Uh, you, you ha- everything that you've done in your life, you've done it perfectly to get where you are today. And that's, sometimes that can be good. Like, oh, wow, all the hard work I paid off for. You're like, oh. Oh, I I might want to do something different. (laughs) I might want to change, and it's a hard thing to do. Change is is difficult. Um, Finish this this phrase for me. Ready? Uh, You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. And and, and we think all of us have used this phrase at least sometime either referring to someone else or referring to us or a reason that you can't do something or we can't learn something. It's like, you can't, I, I bet you if I did a poll and it was a certain age demographics on how to use the computer, you've probably used, you can't teach, I won't say an old dog, but uh, new, you know, <laughs> new tricks. But here's the, 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 the reality is that the phrase is not true. It's not accurate. I don't even know where we got this, this from. But you can teach an old dog new tricks. Now, um, I know this for a fact for different reasons. Uh, one of them is because my dogs have never begged. They never have begged. And um, recently, my 15-year-old started giving the dog scraps from... And, and one of the dogs is about the same age as my 15-year-old, and so this is an old dog. And, uh, and so now, uh, what that dog does when she gets her plate of food, <laughs> and will just dead-eye her, and it's so fun. And if, the, if that doesn't work, it goes to the head on the lap. Now, he, she hasn't started whimpering yet, but there's just this look, and they don't beg for me because I don't, I don't get it. It's like, why? How come? Why? I said, because that's how it goes. Why? How come? Why? And I said, because I don't give them food. <laughs> and they know. They know better. But that's it. You can teach an old dog the trick. Uh, uh, veterinarians will say this, that the dogs are actually very um, amenable to learning. They want to learn. They're very curious. That's, they sniff everything. You take them for a walk. I mean, everything. And uh, that's, that's it. They can learn. They want to learn. The difficulty with an old dog is unlearning bad habits. It's teaching them new things of adjusting to new environments and getting them used to that. But they do want to change. They can change. They can learn. And they've adapted to the the new world. The question is, can you? Can you? Can we? Can we change? Palm Sunday is is about changing that, uh, that view that idea that we can't change. It's about recognizing new signs, new symbols in our lives. Recognize, okay, I've done everything I can to get to where I'm going, but if I want to go someplace else, I might need to look at the world differently or reflect on my life differently. It's about changing the view um, uh, and views that constantly needs to be challenged in our lives. It's about, it really, it is about helping us old dogs learn new tricks. I've preached, uh, this is my 19th year preaching uh, a Palm Sunday sermon. And so that's at least 19 sermons on Palm Sunday that, I've, um, that I have written out or blocked out. And then if you add in the, the churches where I've had two and three and four different services, uh, you know, depending on the Sunday, um, and the, the church, it's a lot of sermons I've preached on Palm Sunday. Now, I've been alive for 50 years, and uh, I know... You were thinking only 38, um, but I've been alive for 50 years, and I've heard, I grew up in the Methodist church, I've heard a lot of Palm Sunday. I've made, we used to, in youth group, we used to make the little palm crosses, and, and the youth group did, and, and, uh, and we'd collect those and, and have those, and I bet, I'm betting that you have heard your number of Palm Sunday sermons. I was talking to a friend of mine, I was like, I'm really struggling with this uh, 
the sermon, and you, at the end of this, I'm hoping that you don't recognize that I struggled with it, but you might. Um, but the, and I was like, he's like, look, he says, they've heard so many, you've, you've preached so many, you could probably do one you did three years ago, and they're not going to know the difference, and you're not going to know the difference. <laughs> and, 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 and he is not a lazy person, but I was like, so I'm not preaching one from three years ago, but I was thinking, dude, is there something new? Is the gospel still penetrating my heart? Is there something new I can learn? And I can't believe it. But after 19 years of looking at this, reading the same scriptures and of this story that we look at, and today is about the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ, people throwing their, their coats, their palm, palms down, Jesus coming in, shouting hosannas. And then this week we will look at uh, um, the, the rest of the story, the darkness of the story that happens. And the next Sunday we'll look at resurrection. 19 years of preaching this, I want to tell you, I saw something I never saw before. I didn't re recognize before. And so I'm going to read to you from the uh, four Gospels, uh, Palm Sunday story. Uh, not every story in, are, um, in the Gospels are in all four. Some uh, writers chose to highlight some different ones. This one is in all four of them. And Matthew writes this in, in chapter 21. And you'll recognize this. As they approached Jerusalem, they came to... Um, Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, and Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet. Say to your daughter's eye, and see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. And they brought the donkey in the cold and placed their cloaks on them <clears throat> for Jesus to sit on. The very large crowd spread their cloaks in the road. And while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road, and the crowds went ahead of them. And they followed and shouted, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred, and they asked, Who is this? And they said, This is Jesus, the prophet from, uh, prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So that's Matthew. Okay, Mark 11. As they approached Jerusalem, they ca came to Bethphage and Bethany and the Mount of Olives, and Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a cult there, which to no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and send it um, back here shortly. And they went, they found a colt outside, they tied it at the doorway, it's untied it, um, and uh, some people standing there asked, what are you doing, untying the colt? They said what they said, they took it, and, and they went on. When they brought the cloak, uh, when they, um, they put them upon the colt, and Jesus uh, threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it, many people spread their cloaks on the road, others spread branches they had cut in the fields, and those they went ahead and followed and shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Luke 19, as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there. Um, uh, which no one has ever ridden, untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untie it? Say the Lord needs it. I'm doing this to make sure you're still with me. And uh, <laughs> so those who were sent ahead, they went and found it just as they had told them. And guess what? Someone asked them, they, right. And so why are you untying? The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus. They threw the uh, cloaks on the colt, put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came to the place near the road, um, uh, where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God, shouting, uh, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest. John 12. And I love John because he's, he's different. And uh, he he's always kind of goes uh, um, just a different way. But he still says, Jesus, uh, The next day the great crowd that had come uh, for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and sat on it, as it was written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. It's a mouthful. It's a lot of the same mouthful. And so, <clears throat> reading this, 
I, I think there's something that we, we often miss, at least I missed it, I, I'm wondering if you missed it as well. And we can get fixated on some things that have become so familiar with us, we think that's what, that's what it is that we're aiming for. And sometimes if we can see things askew, see things a little bit differently, we go, oh wait, maybe I'm called to go over here. It's not too late for us old dogs to learn something new. Today is called Palm Sunday. And, uh, um, and so I, we get that because of these passages. Now, I read to you four different um, Gospels and, and four different passages of the same story. And, and how many um, of them did they mention palms? How many say four? We can do hands here. Um, four, three, two. The winner is one. Uh, you... you um, and the, the palm is only mentioned once. They said they cut branches, then we can make, uh, extrapolate that there's a reason from this that it's probably palm branches, but only, only John mentioned palms, but there's something else that, that is mentioned. I'm going to come to that in just a second, but the reason we call it Palm Sunday is because of the palms that were placed down there, and in and, and some places where palms weren't available, they call, they call today Branch Sunday. They went and got branches, um, and, uh, we can, we, and we could, they used coats in, in all four of them. We could have called today Coat Sunday. It doesn't have the same ring to it. Um, and uh, especially in Florida. Um, and, and so, and, and then the Syriac Christianity, they call today o Oshana Sunday from Hosanna Sunday. And I really like that because Hosanna is shouted in all of these. But there was something else, there was another symbol that was used in all four Gospels. Which one was it? Do you know? The cult, the donkey. Uh, I, I was cr corrected in the, the last service and because um, and, uh, I kept interchanging mule and donkey because I was trying to avoid the three-letter word and because uh, people would get offended by what it's actually called. Um, maybe because I've been called that many times. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, so, so I'm going it's, to... It's the cult mule. Uh, I, I still don't know what the difference is. I don't need to know. Um, I don't, I'm an old dog. I don't want to learn this new trick. Um, but it was the cult. Uh, there's two symbols that we use, the palm and the cult. Now, the palm comes from um, the idea that it actually has uh, um, an, I, behind it a symbol of kingship, of, uh, of celebration, of power, of military. In about 150 years earlier, uh, Simon Maccabee, uh, I, I believe that Simon Maccabee, was um, known to lead the Jewish people out of the occupation that they were in. They led them to freedom. They had a big military revolt, and uh, they declared that he, was the, um, he would be uh, the, their high priest in perpetuity. He was going to be a high priest until um, a, a worthier prophet came along. And they weren't calling him quite Messiah. So there were some that were leaning into that. I encourage you to read the Maccabees and hear about the story that happened in Israel at that time. And, but it was a military revolt. It was a political revolt. And, and what happened was they did have a time period um, of where they got their power back, but then they lost it again. They had a difficult time ruling themselves. And the Roman came in and, and, and took, uh, took over from that place. But that's where the idea of palms were used in the story, where they broke the palms and, and they spread them out and they shouted Hosanna to Simon uh, Maccabee. And so palms had this idea of, of military victory. They wanted this to be juxtaposed to what Pilate and the Romans did when they would come in and, and had their fanfare and their flags. They would ride on their, their high and, and white uh, steeds that would come in on. And here in the Gospels, we see something different. The people chose one symbol. And it's a good symbol to call Jesus King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the, 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 the priest of priests. It's good to, to do that. And Jesus didn't reject that image. He didn't reject that name. But he did say it was too simple by the things that he did. You see, we like to choose symbols of power. And sometimes the symbols we choose are very temporal. But Jesus gave us a different symbol. He gave us the mule. He gave us the foal. He gave us that that donkey. Pilate's horse, Jesus says, no, this is it. An incredible statement. 
to truly understand what it means to follow Jesus, I believe that we have to understand the symbols that he gave us to what a true king is. It wasn't just about palm fronds. He didn't say go cut down palm trees and branches. And now, now we will use palm trees next year or two. I'm not getting rid of the palms because I think they have a significant of what they've come to mean for us. But we can't stop here. Because sometimes what I think we do is that we've chosen the wrong symbol. That we do that in life. We... Um, and what if, what if we can learn new tricks? What if there is still more ahead? What if God wants to take us, Jesus wants to take us further than we've, we've gone? That we, we live in a world of power and might and, and money and comeuppance and, and Jesus chose a mule. What is he saying to us? Perhaps the image that we have for ourselves isn't good enough. We've done everything perfectly to get to where we are today, but maybe it's not good enough. Maybe this isn't the end. Maybe there's somewhere else. We say that we want to be the best me, the best person I can be, but maybe there is something else. Maybe to get to what we truly long for in our heart, Jesus has a different image for us, a different purpose, a different way of life. We say, and we choose that kind of phrase, not today, and Jesus says, turn the other cheek. We, we choose uh, power and, 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 and overcoming. We say one and done, and when you are out, you've, uh, you've, um, you've messed up, you are done, and Jesus says, bless our enemies, pray for those who persecute us. We choose gossip to trap and to control, and Jesus chooses truth to set people free. We choose greed and sharing out of our excess, and Jesus chooses generosity and sharing out of sacrifice. And Jesus is the king of kings. We hail that in our palm fronds. We say, you are king of kings. We will put down our coats. We will put down our palms. And Jesus says, yes, but if you want to follow me to life, follow me on this donkey. Follow me on this colt. And each gospel is a powerful display of people declaring their allegiance to Christ. But right after that, if you look in these Gospels, you see that Jesus weeps over the people. He weeps over Jerusalem. He doesn't go, wow, finally, they get it. He weeps. That should be telling to us. Do we see something different that he weeps for us? And I believe what he's weeping for is that we, they didn't get it. We don't get it. That he's led us to a, a, a wonderful place, but we get trapped in, in a moment. That moment, I want to be the best I can be, and we think that this is it today. And we hold on, and we've been led to Palm Sunday. We shout hosannas, and, it, and as Christians, we think, oh, this is victory. We have victory in Jesus, and we love the powerful hymns. We love the powerful uh, verses that uh, if I can do all things through Christ, that if God is for me, who can be against me, that he lifts me up on eagle's wings. We love these verses, but we forget that the reason that those verses are there is because he said, die to yourself daily, take up your cross, consider others uh, more worthy, humble yourselves If we're going to bless our enemies and bless those who curse us, we can do it because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, because if God is for us, who can be against us, because God has a different metric of what hope and power is. And it's a scary thought. You see, we get led to Palm Sunday, but Jesus says, I don't want you to stop at Palm Sunday. I'm trying to take you to Easter. I don't want you to get stuck Just here in a moment of celebration, I want to lead you to resurrection. Not just salvation for right now, not just a military uprising for right now. Jesus wasn't, he's like, we can do that, but then that's it. Just like the Maccabees, they rose the power, they got their freedom, and they lost it because they couldn't rule themselves, just like we can't fully rule ourselves and our personal lives. And as we've proven time and time again, that politics fails, that entertainment fails, that um, all of the power fails, that money fails. But Jesus Christ never does. And he says, follow me. Follow me. Just a few verses later in John, in the same chapter of 12, he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. To think, all right, fa- fantastic. What a wonderful glorified. It's one of the brightest words that we have. And then he says, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. Wait, you said glorified. Now you're talking about death. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And anyone who loves their life will lose it, it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Now, I want to tell you, the word hate isn't how we understand the word hate. It's about covenant. When J- uh, God says, Jacob, I loved Esau, I hated it. It didn't mean he saw, he was like, Jacob's awesome. Esau, pfft. 
He wasn't dismissing Esau. He was saying, Jacob is where I'm going to establish my covenant. That doesn't mean that Esau didn't have any place in the life of God. And so this type of hate was talking about if you make covenant with yourself, you're going to make covenant with God. Are we making covenant with eternal or covenant with a moment? Anyone who loves their life will lose it. While anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. In other words, we're, we're not making covenant with ourselves, but some, someone greater. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. And so where Jesus goes, we will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. He says, now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Save me from death. Save me from pain. Save me from heartache. No, save me from this hour. No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. I used to have trouble um, with this verse. And I struggled enough to find value in myself growing up to then turn around and say I have to die to myself and, and, uh, and, and in order to live. I have to be a servant and to be humble. I felt like I'd been pretty humiliated for a lot in, in middle school. Isn't that the nature of middle school? And, but here Jesus talks about what glory is, what true lordship is, and it's understood from the back of a donkey, from the back of that colt. Eugene Peterson says, Jesus takes the brightest word in our vocabulary and plunges it into the darkest pit of experience, a violent and excruciating death. And that's the mystery of the seed. The seed has to be placed in the darkest places to come alive to something new. And it's us too. We have to die to ourselves. It's not that we're saying we're dismissing everything that we've made up to this moment, but it's time for us to learn a new trick, the trick and the hope of resurrection. You see, a seed cannot become a tree unless it's buried and ceases to be a seed. A child cannot become an adult unless it ceases being a child. What about you? Have you become the person you want to be? Are you the person you've set out to be as a follower of Christ? Have you fully, are you a fully formed person embodying the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I mean, which one of those do you struggle with? And, and here's the, the bad news. The, the word fruit is singular. So the fruit of the Spirit is all of those things. So are, we, are we really munching on this fruit? Do we have this in our lives? Sometimes we get stuck. We can't let go. Are you stuck? We have an image of our life that we have made for ourselves and that has served us well to this day, but in order for us to get to tomorrow, we have to stop living in today. We are continually moving to something new. I've shared with you before, some of you might remember this, how you catch a raccoon. Um, and, and if you've ever read the red, where the red fern grows, um, that's where I learned how to catch a raccoon. I also had an uncle named Arwood who was a trapper, and he, uh, he could tell you how to <laughs> catch a raccoon. I had a weird family. Um, you catch a raccoon by putting something shiny in the bottom of a, um, a, of a, a bucket, a cup, or a glass jar, and the raccoon takes their little um, freakishly human hand and sticks it into the, the small area, and they grab um, the shiny thing, and they make a fist with it. And uh, when they make the fist, they don't want to let go of the shiny thing, and they cannot get the fist out. And so it doesn't matter how much, you know, this is why I can, with confidence, that one day this is not going to work. It's going to fly right off. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can't let it go, and that's it, is that we get stuck in this place, and we're like, I want to change, but I'm stuck, and we hold so tightly today thinking that this is it, and for some people we hold tight because life has been good, and we've been shouting hosannas, we don't think, we don't want to lose that, and we think that th that's it, we don't realize that there's resurrection around the corner, and for others, we're holding so tight because it's the last thread of hope that we have, it's the, even though we know it's painful, we're like, this is what I know, and we're, we're, we got become addicted to our suffering and our hurt, and we're afraid to let that go. We build monuments to them. We spread out our palms on them. But what Jesus knows is that we can't be fully free until we let go of the trinket. And then when we let go of the trinket, we can pull our hand out and be free. We can't have to let go of this life to become and step into the new life. We can't get to Easter if we're holding on to Palm Sunday. And this isn't 
the end. We must be like Jesus. Follow him in humility and humbleness, the humble nature of Christ. To recognize that Palm Sunday isn't it. It's not just the loud hosannas. It is the hosannas. Sing the hosannas. But recognize we go through the valleys. We go through Holy Week where we recognize we are sinners. That's, that takes humility. <laughs> recognize, who. It's not just about me. We recognize we don't have it all figured out. To recognize it's not by my might or power, but by the, by the Spirit, says the Lord. It's God's grace in us that we go freely and move into the, into the future. To recognize it, we have to lay down our power to let go of the shiny things in our life that we might become the better thing, the free thing, the resurrected life. We have to let go of the palms, let go of the pride, let go of the ego of today and take on the symbol that Christ has given us to be hum humble. And let me tell you, if we look at the news, if you check your phone, don't check your phone, but if you check your phones and you swipe over to the news section, we're in a world that is in desperate need of humble people. And in that humility, we can find life. And it begins here, the table. That's what's so beautiful. It's a table. And Jesus embraces us in our humility because he says, come all, he called them friends and he knew they were going to deny him. They were going to betray him. They were going to doubt him. They were going to flee from him. And he says, friends, friends, come. It's a powerful table. It brings up to this moment when Jesus gives his life for us and says, we are friends. And so I want to invite us on this journey, and it begins, it begins in confession. It's a powerful place to begin. And so I, I invite you, and Christ our Lord invites us to his table. All who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Jesus Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves his love for us. And so I'd like you to repeat this to me and to one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so together, with your people on earth, holy God, with all the company of heaven, we will praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you, Father Almighty. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, drink, this is the blood of my new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remember, remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. 
By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The, the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And so this morning, um, I'm going to invite the choir to start working your way down. We're going to serve you first. And we're going to invite the uh, um, servers to come uh, down as we prepare. But I want to let you know there's going to be three stations, one over here, here, and one in the middle. The one in the middle is gluten-free. The ushers will uh, direct you on which way to go um, this morning. And uh, we want to um, let you know that uh, uh, you can mess all of that up completely. You're still welcome to the table. The important thing is this, is that you know that you were all welcome uh, to come and receive, that all are welcome to the table of Christ. You don't have to be a member here or anywhere else. If you want Jesus this morning, we invite you to come and receive.
Lord, we thank you for this holy mystery. We praise your name, and we pray that you would use these gifts in our life, that we might be your hands and feet in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For our closing hymn, we're going to sing uh, the first and uh, fifth verse of All Glory, uh, All Glory, Laud and Honor. So just two verses. And so as we go out this day, remember to choose the symbol of Christ, to choose Christ himself. That is the, um, the, the communion offering to us, that we take Christ with us and that we do that in humility. And the way we live that out is through what we talk about each week, Bell. So go bless people this week. Bless three people this week at least. Be intentional about that. Eat with people. See how the, the conversation of, of Christ, of love, of hope can come up in your conversation with someone else. And in order to do that, you have to listen to Jesus in prayer in order for us to discern that prayer is to learn who Jesus is in Scripture and remember you're sent into this world to share the good news of Christ. So know his love and share his love with everyone you meet. Amen. Amen.